Okay, Takabi. And close, close the door, please. I have to know if you can play dog, but... Okay, Takabi. Now everybody scream, no respect to the ex. No respect given. Well, first of all, we all know that the Microsoft apps are made to span across both screens of the device. If nothing else, those work almost per perfectly. Just, just to give you an example, when I go into OneNote, both screens are open and I can just go into any of my little books here. Switch through, I'm just using this one so you guys can see. Switch through any of the work that I've done. This is all my personal stuff. And the more in-depth look at the work shows up here. So it's just really nice to have that option. Easy, easy. And most of the uh, Microsoft apps work just like that. You have OneNote, let's say you go into Outlook, the same thing. Yes, my order was delivered, and yeah, the pen does allow you to take a quick peek at um what is in your e email. But let's say, for example, this here was a bid on eBay. You know me, I like my my phone. I'm trying to get back my uh, L LG Wing, and um I can click here, and the more in depth information is here. Now, not everything opens uh, horizontal like this. There are some apps that um, even in with the Microsoft apps that open vertically. For example, if you go into Office, know how it says Office spanned automatically because I have it set to do that. Now, if I go into, let's say, this right here, it'll open what I'm doing here. Again, you no, know, I I love my character breakdowns and all all of that. But if I want to, let's say, do something new, let's go into a brand new Word document. Now, when I change it over like this. Note, I have a quasi keyboard experience where I can just type whatever I want and do it like that. So it did span across both apps, but the bottom screen is the keyboard and the top is the is the screen. Just a testament to the versatility of the device itself. Now let's go back to the regular horizontal view, and we are right back with um my reference. If this was to be that, and what I want to actually say about it here. No, the keyboard is still up. I'm still able to do what I want. But this isn't really the span look. This is more of the a uh, dual app or the dual app uh, usage of the device. But that's not really why we are here. Just an example of how it does work so well. Now, apart from the Microsoft apps, which again, I said are made to pretty much open in the dual screen format. There are other apps here that open in on both screens and work just as well. For our music app, Today, we're going to explore Z Player. Now, this app I was not aware of until recently. A user on Reddit did post about it and how he loves the interface and how it resembles the Zoom players of yesteryear. Now, I was always a big fan of, of the Zoom players, though I never had one myself. But I did have Windows Phone, and I love the music interface of the Windows Phone, and that came from Zoom. So when I saw the pictures that he did post of this app, 
I had to go into it myself. And let me tell you, I'm so happy I did. This app is amazing when spanned across both screens. You have your options on one side. You have, just like with Zoom and Win Windows Phone, the app that you're in, yes, it does cut off due to the divider between the screens, but it's, it's, it's not so bad that it can't be used. Now, when you click or touch on any of the options, you, you can go into what songs you have on the app. And the best part about it, let's just go down to this here, because there's a lot of artists. Whatever you play, the background will change to give you a much more, not interactive, but much more immersive mu musical experience. This is what is missing from a lot of players today. They are boring. Windows Phone and Zune knew what they were doing when they designed this. And I'm really sad that A, Windows dropped Zune players and that they dropped Windows Phone, but more so that they dropped this musical interface. There's no reason why something like this cannot be on your Surface computer or your Surface Duo. This should be the music player for the Duo without question. Yes, they no longer uh, do the Metro style on their machines with their s software. But you have to admit, something like this is much more eye-catching than what they currently have. It just doesn't make any sense that they would uh, discontinue something like this, this uh, Zoom interface and use what they're currently or in favor of what they have now. Now this uh, interface or this Z player is not free. It is a paid app, but personally I think that the developer behind this deserves whatever he can get from us because this player is just amazing. Now, the one flaw with the player is you're going to have to actually download songs again to your device. This device or this player, unfortunately, cannot uh, sync with your cloud music. Now, unless music is one of your favorite pastimes, and you don't mind putting a few gigs of music on your d d d your Duo, not having access to some kind of cloud storage is probably one of the issues, or is one of the issues I hope the developer of Z Player can address. But aside from that, this player is amazing. Um, you get all of your songs, it, it categorizes them. Uh, how I remember it being on. Z Zoom and the even Xbox. I remember. I remember had something along these lines as well. Now you do have a podcast. It it can plug into a po podcast you've downloaded, and it does have radio as well. I'm not sure where it pulls these stations from. I do know there's free radio on the internet, so I'm guessing this that's where all these options come from. But always great to have these things than not. If you don't want to actually download anything, the player can still be a useful addition to what you have on your phone. No, no matter how you do it, it looks good, it works well, and it is really, really, really interesting to have if nothing else. It's just wonderful. 
Another app that of course should be a no-brainer for being able to span across both screens well is the camera app of the Surface Duo. It's the Duo 2, it will showcase how it spanned across both screens so well. And in time, the or original Duo did get the same camera app application. Here you have your camera, and here you, you have whatever pictures that you did take with the camera. But, so this works fine. Whatever you take, it appears here, and you could take a nice close look at, at it and see what you might want to change or edit or whatever the case might be. But, a real testament to the Duo's dual screen capability comes in when you go into Microsoft Photos. Now, in here, is where you see a lot of how this dual screen can work. Now, I just took this picture here. And here it appears on this side. I can scroll through whatever I have taken. Let's actually look at this here. This looks kind of weird. Right. But now, when I go into the edit, you get this amazing interface able to change the size of the picture so it looks however you want you're able to adjust the brightness of it the exposure the contrast highlights a whole slew of adjustments for the image in question, all without losing any of the image. None of these sliders go at the bottom or the side, so the image is always in view. A much more reason reasonable way to adjust your image then let's say how um, Google might do it when their stuff isn't optimized for the dual screen. So the image appears right in the middle and you have your, the options at the bottom on a regular sing, single screen device that might just work fine. But on something like this, not at all. You need to be able to have this type of control on either screen so that it's easy to manipulate. So again, the duo shows the potential of using dual screens to do a singular action or activity and how much more useful something like this can be now the app i'm about to show you i have showcased before but because it works so well across both screens it can't be helped but to show it again um and that of course is microsoft game pass which will be the gaming app for this part particular showcase looking at the app you, you might say well it, it doesn't divide particularly evenly across both of the screens of the duo but you can move things around and uh though the divider does cut off some of the image it's, it's not so bad because the images can be uh, adjusted to show the full view of any image you might want to see but where it really does shine is when you, you go into a part particular area play with touch now when you play with touch one screen becomes the actual screen of the game while the other screen becomes the controller and you get a nice uh nintendo game boy or nintendo ds style system when it's done now let's go into a game i haven't even played on this to see what the controller type looks like now i am a big fan of ninja Gaiden. Now, so let's get into it. 
and see exactly how it looks with its span across both screens. Now, you you might be saying, hey, there's a big old divide in, in the image. The buttons are e evenly divided on each screen, but it doesn't look the best. Okay, that's true. When you turn it on its side, there you have it. The controllers have moved to the bottom screen, while at the top, you have full view of what you're playing. It says press A. And there you go. Nintendo DS, or dual screen as it was called, like play. I said, let's start this up. Now, like I had said before, with many of these games, the, the developers can opt to change how the buttons and the layout is, depending on what they think works best for the game. Ninja Gate game here has a very general setup. Very much how uh, Xbox would like it to be, or Microsoft. You can find a lot of games with this layout. Now, if I go into a different game, let's try and see how the controller layout is. Now, as you can see, just on the image on the bottom screen, without me even beginning the game, the bun layout has completely changed. The images have changed. We can easily see here that B is the emer e emergency break. Where, where they put it, they changed the image. A seems to be a, a way to uh, shift up, X, shift down, plus and minus. You have a right here the gas and inside the middle the brake the Y the reset. The, the way the buttons have been laid out is completely different from Ninja Gaiden. Uh, the left uh, control stick is the steering wheel, and you have your left and right buttons and L and R. The layout here completely different, but. For the game, it's what it's the layout that the developers wanted. So you can see the controls that that they have are optimal for this type of game. Though so I'm not particularly the best at the type of games. Having the gas in the middle as opposed to the bottom, having the wheel exactly where it, it is, where my thumbs can just land on it naturally. It allows for a better gaming experience, and that's how how you drift. You just have to figure th that out. So, with that, you can see how the ability to span your apps across both screens of the duo creates a much different experience than simply having it in one or on one of your screens. If you have a duo, you owe it to yourself to really experiment with the different apps that are there because some may not explicitly say that they work well across both screens. But when you open them in both screens, you might be surprised at just how well they actually work. With that said, my name is NG, the Neon X, and showing you the potential of spanned apps on your Surface Duo, this is what I'm into.